Mm, get a tragic here and wait. Ah, ooh, I can't even speak. Welcome to my latest mod, Tabletop Simulator. This is another tool. And I've fallen into the age old programming trap of spending two weeks writing a tool to automate a task that would probably take me two days to actually do. So awesome. But the point is, it's done. Let's show you what it does. Uh, now, this is just for me. I'm making some new mods, so I wanted a way to edit my objects really easily. And this is sort of like an advanced version of my old tag and name mod. So basically, you, you just have this little object. You can drag this into any scene that you like, into your whips. Uh, and first thing you want to do is just hit spawn platforms and it will just make these little platforms. These platforms have number, you know, names and descriptions telling you how to use them. If for any chance you have too many platforms and you try to process the cards, it'll, if you look in the chat, it'll tell you that you've got too many. But uh, if you just do spawn platforms again, it'll, you know, redo them all. And if you right click it, it'll delete them. So there's your platforms. The other spawn button at the top will spawn note cards. So you just press it once and up comes a card. If you press it three times, oh, three cards will come out. But if you right click it, it'll bring out six, one for every platform. And uh, I'll show you how they work in a sec. And finally, we've got the spawn bag button. This is the same as before. So you just press it as many times as you want and it will spawn that many bags. And you can right click it to just spawn 20 bags. Okay, so what does this tool do? Basically, there's a number of things in Tabletop Simulator that you can edit and this tool just allows you to do it. You can edit the name, you can edit the description. There's a thing called GM notes. There's another thing called memos, but this mod doesn't handle memos. You can also edit the toggles on the objects. You can edit the tags on the objects and you can even edit properties on the object. So let's just show you how it works. First, I'll just get some objects and I'll get a deck as well. Get a standard deck. First thing I'll do, I'm just gonna put a couple of objects on here and I'll just scale these up, make them a bit easier to see. So I've got these objects, I've just placed them on the tool. I'll spawn a card. And the reason I'm using these cards is uh, I thought it would be cool to use cards because you could then store them and save them in bags and have a record of, you know, so you go, oh, I wanna, I've, I've just installed an expansion. I now need to tag and name all my all the new cards to match the new decks. You can just load up your old a bag with your old cards in and drop them on the thing. So that's why they're cards. So the first thing we'll do is name and description. So basically, if I just if you look, let me just switch over to GM mode. If I right click on any of these objects, you can see there's no name, no description, no GM note. So if I just type into here name and I'll put into here desk rip ION, you can see I just put a couple of lines in a space. And the good thing about cards is you can very easily look at it by holding down alt and mouse over. Then what it'll do when you hit process cards, first thing it'll do, it'll make sure you've got all the correct platforms out. It'll then check to make sure you've got a note card on the platform. So if it can't find the platform and the note card, it'll turn the button off. So if I do press note card here, it goes your bam. It's turned all the buttons off except for the name description. And if I mouse over these, you can see it's now got the description and the name. So if I right click, you can see name and there's the description I did. It's a pretty terrible description that, isn't it? So why don't I just put in, this is a better example of a description. Demo object. Just do that again. And now you can see that the description has been entered. There's a number of little, there's this little thing here called replace. So currently the, the description is always replaced. Okay. But the name can be sort of added to. So if I change that to prefix and I just change this name to, I'll just pull that off, get out a new one. I just change this to prefix. I'll just say to start, start. And now I go process with prefix selected. 
you can see that it's added start to the front of the name and it's left the description blank. Now I can also do suffix. So let's go suffix. And now I process and you can see that the name is now start name suffix. And this is really handy for when you're naming objects. I like to use quite detailed names because when you have objects in a bag, uh, when users are searching the bag manually, they can only use the name. So if you want to have a card that say is a type like, you know, dwarf, you actually have to have dwarf in the title. Otherwise they can't search the deck for dwarves. You know, so anything you need. So I actually have quite long titles, so it's really handy for me. And remember, this is a tool for my own needs. And if other people can use it, great. Basically, if I just come down here, I'm going to change the name to this is a, a demo objects. That's the new name is going to be demo objects. Now, if I leave the description blank, I'll stick this on replace. Boom. What it does, it changes the name because I had replaced to demo object, but it didn't change the description. Just like it says in the description of the instructions, if you want to actually remove something, like if you have it blank, it just basically ignores it. But if you want to remove it, just type in clear field. It's not case sensitive. And then when you do it, it'll, uh, it'll clear the field. Okay. So there's that. Right, just put another thing in. The GM notes acts the same way. So basically the, the name field here is ignored. And the reason I do that is because when you, like I said, when you're searching bags, you can only search by name. So if I have this called demo object, right, and I have, them in the bag for saving for later, I can search by the name and it will find all the cards associated with demo object. But uh, the GM note is actually taken from the description. And the reason I did that is so you can see it. So uh, this is a GM note and the GM note will be uh, spawn data, whatever you want it to be. And now you'll note so if I go process, I'll right click and you can see it hasn't put the GM notes in. And that's because while it automatically turns off the, the, the buttons, if there's no card found, it won't automatically turn them on because I wanted the ability to just ignore the cards if I wanted. So let's turn on GM notes and do it. And now when we right click, you can see the GM note is written in the, in the objects. Okay, so that's basically that. <laughs> but we also have this little one here. So if I turn off both of these and I turn on edit, let's grab a new card. The way the edit function works is that what you're searching for goes in the top and what you want to change goes in the bottom. So if we look at our card, we have demo object, and we have demo object written in the card. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna search for demo object and I'm gonna change it to example for YouTube tutorial. All right? So it's gonna search for demo object and replace it with example for YouTube tutorial. Over here you have the ends so that only searches the name D only searches the description. N and D searches the name and the description. G searches the G note. And A searches everything. So let's do name and description. We go process cards. And now you can see that, oh, I only put it on description. So <laughs> I accidentally only had it on description. So you can see I had it on description. So the description has been changed as to example for YouTube tutorial, but the Object is still called demo object. I like that, I'm gonna leave it like that. If I had it set to name and description, it would do both. And that's basically so you can 
search for a string and replace it. The thing is, this is also done in order. So it goes uh, one, two, three, which means I could have both these on and then process and it'll still end up with the same result because it does the card first, does the GM note, and then it does the replacement. So that is the functions to edit the names and the G notes and stuff. Now let's have a look at the property, uh, the tags. So the way the tags work is if you look at any object in Tabletop Simulator, there's a, uh, the way the toggles work, beg your pardon. It says in toggles, you've got all these different options you can turn on or off. Now, some examples of good things that I like to turn off is there's an option here called, let's turn off the snap to, to snap to uh, grids or turn off the snaps. I'll leave snap on, but I'll turn off snap to grid. I'm gonna turn off sticky, I'm gonna leave tooltip on, I'm gonna leave draggable on. And uh, sticky is a really cool one because basically, normally if you've got an object sitting on a card and you pick up the card, it picks up the object with it, which is good for a lot of cases. But if you've got a mod that has lots of tokens sitting on cards, you can set it to non-sticky. And then when you pick up the card, it just picks it up. You don't have to spend five minutes dragging all the objects off the card. So I, I set a lot of my decks to, to non-sticky. So the way this works is you just place it on the, on the platform and then you set the toggles up to any way you want. So I've got to set it to only to draggable, auto raise and tooltip. So if I look at the objects here, you can see they've got all the different, you know, all these other ones on. So now if I go to toggles and I just go process, all it does is it copies the toggles from here onto here. So now you can see they match. That's just a way to set toggles so you can set all your cards and your decks. And we'll just name that as well, demo object. So that's how toggles work. Now we have properties. Now the properties one is a little harder to use because it's sort of more for advanced modders. The way it works is the name field isn't used again. So we can just name it the same as all our other objects, or all our other cards, so they're all grouped. And if you type in an attribute of the model, it will then modify that with the result. But the thing is, you have to, you as the modder needs to know what that is, okay? So for example, say I want to, so these are all set to 1.9. I wanna set all my objects to scale of two. Okay, so I'm just gonna go uh, right click. In the description, I'm gonna type scale. It's not case sensitive. And then it's the colon button to finish the keyword. And then I'm just gonna type in the, uh, the scale, which I'll make it 222. Okay, and now if I do properties and process, it'll scale them all up. To make that a little bit easier to see, I'll do it with this little ones, these brand new ones, boom. You can see they scale up. But what's interesting is you can do it with other objects as well. So if I take out, if I get component, I go to custom, I go to token, I'm gonna to set thickness to uh, 0.1 and I'll just get a card back or whatever. I've got this set to here. Now, if I come into my properties and I'll just make a new line and I'll go, thickness colon true and I go stack uh, thickness colon one and I go stack of all colon true. Like I said, this is for more advanced models because you need to know what these values are to be able to edit them. But once you do it and then I go process, I just go boom, you can see that it has scaled it up to the 222, like just like the other objects but it's also made it thicker. You can see if I right click now, it is thicker at one and it's also stackable, which means I can stack them up. You know what I mean? So what I might do is I'll just make it that uh, 0 0.5. And let's go process, boom. And you can see now it's uh, smaller. 
But the thing is, what's cool about the this is that it'll only find existing attributes. So it hasn't the the thickness and the stackable because they're not on these uh, go pieces. That they're not attributes of the go pieces. Will not it doesn't add anything or screw up in that way. So that's how the properties works. You basically just type in the property you want to edit with a colon, and then you type in the number. Uh, it only really does scale because uh, position and rotation is relative to the scene. And I did leave the little curly brackets on the scale because, you know, you can basically set the scale you want. Just click and go copy scale and then just paste that in. Just get all these off. You see? So if I now make this huge and go properties, you can see that it fixes the scale to whatever I assigned. And that's that. You can change the images, you can change any attribute, but you need to know the actual attribute to do it. Lastly, we have tags. So the way tags work, let's spawn another card is again, the name doesn't do anything. So we'll call it demo object. So all the cards are sort of linked. The way tags work is it also uses keywords. You have add colon and then the tag name. This is a tag. You also have remove colon and put a tag name in. So we'll go uh, remove uh, tag. Example tag to remove. And I'll just add that one as well. I'm going to add a couple more. So I'll go add uh, another tag. I'll go add more tags. I'll go add even more, even many more tags. Okay, so these can be whatever you want. So let's just turn on toggles and I'm gonna go process. And what it does, uh, not toggles, uh, tags. So basically, uh, actually what I forgot to tell you, if you go to options and go to game keys, there's a number of options here. You've got print tags, clear tags, Toggle tooltip, add tags, replace tags, remove tags, and that'll work on the mouse over and it'll work on off this, this tag list as well. So if I press the hotkey that I've set up, if you look in the chat in the bottom corner to print the tags, you can see there's no tags on this object. So unless with the tags add selected, let's go to bam. And now I print the tags of that object. You can see that the tags have been put on the end in alphabetical order and they've, they've kept all the camel case and everything is working. If you want to, what you can do is you can put a double dash at the start. So I'll, I'll put a double dash on the even more tags. We don't want that one. And now uh, I'm going to change it to replace, which means it's going to ignore the existing tags and just replace them with all the ads. So we go boom. And you can see now when I print out the tag, there's only four because the even more many tags or whatever is got the, the double dash to ignore. Finally, you also have remove tag. So that's gonna look at only the remove thing. So each of these, each of these objects has a tag called example tag to remove. And I've set the demo object up here to remove that tag. So tags remove, I click, and now when I print out the tags, you can see there's only three. Another thing that uh, should be interesting is uh, I'll just uh, I'll just make another add new tag. So basically I've got another object here with two different tags. And the reason I wanna show you that is because there's a difference between add and replace. So if I have it set to add, it'll, add the tags here to the existing tags on the object. Or if there's no tags on the object, it'll just add them. So this, these objects have three tags. And if I hit add, they now have 
it's five tags. But if I have it set to replace, it'll just replace all the tags completely. You can see in the printouts down here. And that's pretty much how that all works. And that's it. That's how the mod works. But there's a little bit more. Basically, if you do it to Dex, it'll uh, still work. So I'm just gonna do the name and I'm gonna edit the name in the description and I'm gonna set the toggles and I'm just gonna go boom and it's processed that entire deck. So if I come out, you can see that every card's been named and if I go to the toggles, all the toggles are right. And if I print the tags, they've got all the tags. And in fact, I'm gonna just set those, the toggle to non-tooltip. Oh, I'll, I'll leave the tooltip. And that's an example of how that works. But obviously the last thing is that if there's, there's not a lot of space here. So what you can do is you can spawn a bags here and it'll process one level into this bag. So if I put, if I uh, delete all these, uh, let's get brand new objects. Uh, let's just get, yeah, brand new objects. Oop, pick this up there. We get brand new objects and I just dump them in here. Except I'm missing like that. And let's also get another another deck, standard deck. I'll just split this and split this. So we'll put a couple of decks in there. Oh, <laughs> so screw that up. Let's uh, split this, put a deck in there. I'll split this, put a deck in there. it'll still process everything. Okay, so I'm gonna go process, boom, it does its thing. And if I pull out these from the actual bag, you can see that they've also been tagged, named, and everything, okay? Uh, and all the objects inside. If you want to tag bags themselves, just place them inside a bag. So if I just spawn another bag and I'll put a couple of bags in there like that. So if I look in this bag, there's bags inside it. If I do the naming now, that is how you name and tag bags themselves because otherwise it'll look inside the bag. And that's pretty much the mod, the tool anyway, and it's complete. So, oh wait, just before I go, I'll just show you how to use this in a practical way. So if I just go to my uh, current mod I'm working on, the way you might use this is, I'll just get rid of this, this is the old one here. Basically you can just go to the, like I'm going to go to my save game, but it'll be in the workshop for you guys. You just go, Search, and just drag the tool out like that. Lock it down, spawn your platforms and go to work. And that's how you use it in your own mods. And this is all self-contained code. So you'll be able to edit your scripting without you know, needing all my includes and everything. And that's that. Okay, everything's done. I'll see you guys next time.